of our understanding. Amen. Let your word penetrate our lives. Amen. Bring out that which you want to bring out in our lives. Amen. In 2024, we will journey with you. Amen. And you will journey with us. Amen. We will not serve you in ignorance. Amen. We will serve you with understanding. Amen. Holy Spirit, you are the greatest teacher. Te teach us tonight. Amen. And honor yourself. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless. Let's have our seats. This evening, I will be speaking briefly on what I tied to no small jobs. No small jobs. And I'll be reading from Mark chapter 14, verses 3 to 9. No small jobs. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence, and I'll be given to the poor, and they murmured against him. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, 
and wheresoever you, you will, ye may do them good. But me, ye have not always. She had done what she could. Take note of that word. She had done what she could. In other words, all that he has power to do, it may be small in your eyes, but what she could, she has done. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verse 9. Verily, verily, I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the world, this also that she had done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Praise the Lord. This evening, I want to encourage us as we serve God in 2024. I discovered that the drama ministry and most ministries is a ministry or the work of God, let me say generally, God's kingdom is a ministry of co collaborations. We are little, 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 little small jobs come together to bring about big jobs. You know, I've always sat down, sat myself down and talked to myself. When I get some point and look at myself and say, the last one come. This one that we are starting to do every now and then, going from one location to the other, looking for something. Look, you know, I was saying it the other time that we wanted to do a stage production. Stage production. Mm -hmm. Stage. We spent over 190. 20, 20 something thousand. And my children were going around picking stones for the same production. My wife and I, we went to market to go and be buying costumes, different costumes for one production. And a brother that did not even know that it was not Jatin, because he saw my name, gave us, he went to pay for flowers for us, one production. One. And his sister, all the way from Akiribiata, she came for three reasons and she will come with loads of stone. One stage production. And we came on one day, under one hour, and we did all of that. Where we have spent over 100,000. Do you know, you know, I told you earlier that we bought La Paix. One of the things that propelled me to go and collect that La Paix was that stage production because it is such that we cannot use mic. In one, one of the characters is will be walking, no hand. So there's no way you can hold. So we use five lapels. So we, if we put all of that together, we will spend like 200,000 for one production. But you see, somebody is sewing clothes, somebody is doing makeup, somebody is singing, somebody, I call somebody from Lagos to come and do something for one. So, we need to, therefore, put everything we are doing in perspective. That God is taking note of all of those things. There is no small job in God's kingdom. That is where I'm really going. No small job. Those people that brought stone, this, the stone we were able to stack was up to this. And everybody that brought his stone has done the work of God in a big way. That is how God operates. And if we don't understand it in that context, you will think, what am I doing? I'm just singing. Just. And you will miss the word. The people that are acting, they are on the other side. It, me. They just asked me to be picking beans here. I will be feeding them. My own is small. But do you know that if you refuse to do that, the people that are acting will not be able to act. Here we saw a practical example where a woman who did not even know that Jesus was going to die went to bring an alabaster box. 
broke it and anointed Jesus. And people were saying, just like it will always be, even from the time of Jesus. You see, while I ain't for you, you are only too much. What are you even getting from this drama? I've had a number of my friends call me and say, this one that you are doing, you are just spending money, wasting to them, wasting. Wasting, that was the same thing they said to this woman. See, why is it that he's wasting this? Jesus said, keep quiet. What she has done is little to you, but in God's kingdom, it is the aggregate of little here, little there, that brings about the work of God. So, as we are serving God, whether in your church as an usher, or in this drama ministry, we are just drawing cable around. And there are people that are saying 1 to say 120. You are not even there. If you commonize it and say, a small job, then you have missed your reward. You have commonized, you have reduced your reward to nothing. Because the people that will be in front of the camera and you that you are drawing cable around, if you don't do that, those people in front of the camera will not stay. So there is no small job in God's kingdom. Jesus now said, all this one that you are saying because you think it is not important. This woman has done this. It is symbolic in my spirit, in my preparation for my death. And the purpose for which Jesus actually came is for that death. So that woman will not have imagined that she is doing something that is symbolic to the original intention of God. That God has said as far back as Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, that the, 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 I mean, the son of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. So this woman, because of that little thing, has brought something significant in God's kingdom. That is why we cannot afford to commonize. At times we ask you to contribute money. And you say, I don't have. I have 500 naira. I have 1,000, I have 10,000, but it is little. Do you know that as little as that is, if you do it with the right mind, you are doing God's work. There is no small job in God's kingdom if it is done with faith. So I challenge you as you go in the journey of 2024, don't commonize any work of God. Some have been deceived to believe that it is the people that you see on the pulpit that are holding mic, that are shouting and doing deliverance, that are doing God's work. But the stage where they are standing, it was somebody that put it there. The mic that they own and it is working, it was somebody. But if you that the one is somebody that put it there and you don't understand and you think your own is little, then you have belittled your, your work and you have belittled your reward. Because in God's record, there is no small job. That is why I don't believe in this idea of I am the lead character. Produced, directed, written, and destroyed by all those, they, they, they don't matter as far as God is concerned. God can give you the privilege, but it is nothing to glory about. Because the person that sang the soundtrack, as much as the person that did the sound, as much as the person that, that even came to cook, there's a woman in, this, in this, this school. She's not a member of this ministry, but there is no time we are, we are doing ministry that you will not see her to come and work for us. One way or the other, she is doing the work of God. And she's not less important than the, your president that is doing written and directed by. She's not less important. And she's not as if we pay her or give her anything. She's just working there. We just pay her salary there. But she will go. Most of the things we buy now, food, she will be the one to go and buy it. And I will put her name. Just for recognition. But everyone is recognizing her. So this year, as you journey with God, don't commonize any... You know, 
You know, I keep saying don't commonize it because at times you may decide not to do it well because you think it's small. Pretty this small one. They just asked me to fast. But that one is small. That one is small. Let me. Uh, that one. So you can afford to do it anyhow. I, I heard the story of an usher. That some of us we call ordinary usher. Who the, the story asks it that there was a time that somebody came to confess. So the person has evil spirit. She was an agent that was sent to come and do an assignment in that church. He said, what, what prevented her from being able to do it is this usher. He said, each time she sighed this usher, there's something around him. She will not be able to stay and she will go back. But if, she has, if the usher, usher has said, I'm just doing a small job, am I the one saying hallelujah? No, the choir. They are the one singing me, nobody is seeing me. If he attempted to walk like that, this woman will have been able to come, this lady, and destroy the church of God. One man will understand his job. That is why, you know, at times it pains me when we are saying, let's do this, and nobody is doing. Even as the president, I am so limited. I, I hope you know. So limited. I can't be anywhere. The only thing I can be is where I am now. But if some of us think, ah, if I am the president, ah, you will see. Where you are, what are we seeing? Let's see something that happened in John chapter 6, verse 5 to 13. An interesting story that I know some of us will know it, but there's something that um, I got to understand. Especially recently when I went to meet with our daddy, daddy, daddy Mike Bamloy. God opened my understanding to something very important. We are talking about no small jobs in God's kingdom. He said, I read from verse 5, John chapter 6, verses 5 to 13. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto them, When shall we buy bread that this may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. In other words, don't let us trouble ourselves. And this year, we should not live our life without faith. I, 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 I am tempted to tell you something that God spoke to me while we were praying. And I'm be, I began to calculate. Maybe I will tell you later. I want to discuss it with my wife first. That in, uh, 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 we are talking about big money already. And he's asking me to invite somebody that will spend big money. And I was asking, you know, you know in my heart, we are, this year, 2024, our 20th year anniversary, I can come. But that is human calculation. Where are we going to get money to do our 28th year anniversary? We are going to rent all for two days. We are going to feed people. I don't know, I didn't even remember to mention, we are going to do magazine, big magazine, colored. I've not even mentioned all of that. And even me now, as I am, I don't have anything in my account. But that is, that is man's understanding, like these people. Where are we going to get Jesu, this ministry? Let's just allow these people to go. Like I was almost tempted to, two years ago. I mean, was it not last year? that I said, we are not going to do anything 20th year anniversary. We just do our, we just give thanks to God. You know, one of the things I was thinking, okay, where are we going to get money? But that is not God. So this year, even you don't limit yourself. Okay, all of us are going to contribute 100,000. Say, Amy, I cannot get it. You will not get it. 
because you have said it. Even if, if it is coming your way like this, your mouth has pushed it back. Don't be an enemy of yourself because the God we are serving is not limited. So, Philip said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. That is, even if we calculate it, don't be an economist with God. Economist with God. When I wanted to go on full time, I gave this testimony in my church. And I, my whole salary, if I put everything together, cannot even take care of some of my immediate need. And you know my wife, women at times, economist, she sat down and that was two years back, and she looked into this last year and said, sir, in 2023, your first daughter will be in the exam class. She will pay for work. Your second daughter will be in the exam class. You know work. And your son will enter JSS1. Big money. That was as far back as two years ago. If you know, I continue to say, he, where are we going to get this money? But I just said, even me, I don't know. Let's have faith. No money anyway. We are not expecting there's no monthly something. And as if, as to make the matters worse, even the school here began to have issues. No money was coming in. And I said, August, August last year, when we calculated what we needed between that August and December, it was 420,000 for school fees alone. And even me, as a man, well, I've learned that God is omnipotent, He can do anything, I just, anything, anyhow. I just, I just roughing it, you know, like when we say it. And by December, how it happened, I don't know. One way or the other. Precept of all precept. Precept of all precept. By December 20 something, maybe 27, the last one, which was 90,000, was paid. So if, if I calculate then, two years ago, hey, 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 and I put it to be more than two million, and here we are. So don't, don't, don't be an economist of God. Because at times, what, what limits us is what we can see. That was why I was saying it earlier, that we need to see beyond what our immediate environment before we can get to work with God this year. If you have any project that has been abandoned, you need to see that it has been completed. If there's anything you have limited yourself, this is the, the way I will be. See, I beg you in the name of God. You need to change your sight, your sin, and see yourself beyond. Don't limit yourself by where you are now. As I am now, I don't have 20,000 as, as, as I am. But I should not base this year, this month, this week, based on my immediate level. Because between now and tomorrow, God can give me one million. So don't limit yourself. When we say, ah, we are going to go, we are going to this location, and we spend one million. I say, ah! I told you of a brother who left my former church because he said there were too many windows in the church, and we are just building the church, and that how are we going to, if we ask us to contribute money, so he left the church. The church is completed now. And he likes, last time I saw him in Oshobo, his life is gosh. So don't, don't allow, you see, when, 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 I don't know what came over David, that you, the person you want to fight, you are looking at him like this. From, you know, in, in filmmaking, we call that uh, low and good shot. You are looking at him like this, and you are still talking. That is how you should look at any big project ahead of you. He's intimidating you, you are talking, I'm going to do you. 
I love the word the man used. He said, he said, I am going to kill you, Koti Pao. And I'm going to give your, your flesh to the boss of the year. 17 years old. So don't be intimidated by how big any project is. Don't be intimidated by how big your personal project is. Have a dream. God told um, Abraham, he said, come and see the star. He said, what can you see? He saw beyond his eyes, his horizon. And God said, I will give it to you. But if you don't see anything, if what you are seeing is defeat, that is what you are going to get. May that not be your portion this year in Jesus' name. So, let me go back. I just digress a little. No small jobs. So, Philip had finished everything. There's no how we are going to get this thing done. Oh, let's forget. And he said, and this he said, okay, okay, let me Verse, where did I stop? Verse 8 now. So one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which had five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what, but what are they among so many? Hey, dog. Is this lad, is he a member of the ministry? This young boy. So why are you even counting on his, banking on his uh, lunch? You know, at times when, when a situation is too big for you, you must have some something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you already have an, a feeling that Jesus will do something because a small boy's lunch. And so this year, don't, 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 don't undervalue or don't overlook little things. God will use the little things to, to achieve great things in your life this year. Don't overlook them. I don't have anything. That little you have, if God magnifies it, it can be something. Have you noticed that when people, when you pass around a dung hill or where the poor things, something that somebody went to pour away, people go there and they find treasure. We had the, the person that threw it away, it has become a waste. But to the person that found it, it has become what? A treasure. So don't undermine anything that God is bringing your way. It could be a job, a small job, a small contract, a small opportunity. Don't say, what, you know, you know what this man said, Andrew said, what is that to these people? There's no small thing in God's kingdom. To him now. Don't even let us talk about it because he cannot do anything. Compared to the magnitude of the people we want to feed. So this year again, when God brings something your way, it could be a seed. And God will tell you, this is 10,000 naira. And you have it. And God says, don't spend it. Sow it here. I said, God, you do hear what I said. I said I need something of 50,000. You are saying, he said, no, don't worry. Sow it and see what I will do. Hey, but it is even small. What we are looking for is 500,000. I only have 10,000. God said, give it. And so, Jesus said, and Jesus said, make the men sit down. <laughs> I can imagine that drama. You know, the Bible did not say Jesus answered them, bring the food. As soon as he heard that there is at least something, he has known that it has been solved. Make them sit down. Like I told you I did the other day, when there was no money, and God said, go and do this location. And I, I took my distance right there, no question. And I formed the group. No money, and somebody was asking me for his own money thinking that there was money somewhere, not knowing that I just formed it by faith. And before two days after, God supplied the money. So that was, so we, we need to work with faith this year, even with little things. Take step. He said, so there, there are two fishes, Abby, and five bread. Keep it. Let them sit down. And I imagine if I'm going to write it as a script, 
the apostles, the disciples they call themselves. Eh? Kill all that stuff. What did the guy say? He said he should sit down. Sit down, what? Ah. Eh? Let them sit down. Let them sit down. See what I'm saying? What you do? do what you want. We will not be put to shame. Praise God. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, wow. I don't even know what I'm talking about now. No small jobs. And I'm going deeper. See, this year, do not allow yes. anything to take away thanksgiving from your mouth. This is the beginning of the year. And I've told the Holy Spirit to speak through me. So if I don't follow what I have here, I will follow the Holy Spirit. No matter how troubled you are, give thanks. Amen. No matter how big the situation is, what should you do? Give thanks. Sister Corrida said something while she was teaching prayer the other time. And I think all of us should learn from that. Somebody is dead on the, this thing. They have prayed all the manner of prayers and all the shouting. And they may speak in tongues. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Nothing happened. But a man of God came and said, let's be giving thanks. Let's be giving thanks. And it looks stupid. Now, that was what Jesus is doing. I imagine Brother Thomas say, Come, uh, what? Brother Sane, kill him. What is this that our guy is doing? People are sitting there and they, they are already yawning. Oh, and our guy is giving thanks. Over what? So don't allow the devil or anything to scare you from giving thanks, even over when there is a problem. Amen. Amen. So he gave thanks. And he distributed. To the disciples. <laughs> How many loaves of bread? Huh? Five. How many fishes? How many disciples? <laughs> so how did he decide? How did he distribute it? Even if we agree that he distributed it one one, so that is seven all together. Five loaves, two fishes. Or we can only assume that they cut it into two. They imagine what what food is it a food of a giant the food of a little boy you can imagine how big it will be so by the time they even put it it will become crumbs as a bag there is no small job in God's kingdom so he distributed seven things to 12 disciples and he gave instruction to them Abi, and the disciples to them that were sat down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would, and they were filled. And he said unto the disciples, Gather up fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore, they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with how many? They gathered, no matter how small the basket is. Do you remember that the initial bread and fish was not even up to one basket? That is the power of God. There is no little thing. As little as that is, God can multiply it. Now look at it this way. If any of the disciples had decided as soon as Jesus gave them to eat it, because they were also hungry. What would have happened to that miracle? Would have ended in their stomach. Unfortunately, that is what some, a, a lot of children of God do. The miracle that should feed 5,000 is in their tummy. Because they think it is small. So let us eat it. So God will be giving you some small things this year that should feed nations. You must discern not to eat it so that it can feed. Of course, God or Jesus will still have done what he wanted to do. But that person will have been the cause why some people will not be fed. Now, now, at the end of the day, how many baskets of food were left? Twelve. How many disciples? 
So if they are going to share the leftover, one one. Why did this start small? So if anyone has eaten their own, so it would have reduced. So even if they were hungry, would they have been able to even finish one basket? So this year, I need us to be sensitive. One of us led that prayer and I was so excited. Be sensitive to God. It is not everything that God gives you that you will eat. Then it is not every assignment that they give you that you think it is small. As small as your own contribution, as the disciples were sharing it, it is meant to feed thousands. And now, you know, the Bible said 5,000 men without counting the women. Let's start from where we are. How many men are here? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, women. One, two, three, four, five, six. Our own is better because we are ministers. In churches, where you find a man, you find at least three or four women. And assuming all these men are married, Abby, and they have two, two children, so at least for one man, they show three other people, the wife and two children. So 5,000 times three. So 15,000 plus 5,000, 20,000. With what? Five loaves, two fishes. Imagine this boy did not release that five loaves and two fishes. 20,000 people will be hungry. So this year, you need to release what is in your hand so that the 20,000, the multitude can be fed. And where God feeds multitude through you, you can never be hungry. So there is no little job in God's kingdom. That's where I'm going. Don't belittle that which you have. The gift you have, where well, every time they ask me to go and be carrying costume around, somebody who is the one that is cooking, they are eating all the meat. Do your own. I don't care, I'm not saying you are eating the meat. Amen. Amen. Let me close. Mark chapter 9, verse 41. Mark 9, 41. If you are there ahead of me, you can read it. Mm -hmm. Because he is going to Christ, mm. verily I say unto you, mm. you shall not lose his reward. Praise the Lord. Amen. God again, Jesus again, is saying that you, we need to put our this thing in perspective, our service. A cup of water, but for what reason? Because you are servants of God. So that cup of water ceases to be just a cup of water that can be thrown away. It has become God's service. How much is a cup of water? How much is a cup of water? But when it is done with the purpose of God, that I am doing this for God, here we are since morning. We have not eaten. We are fasting, praying, since for hours. But if we don't put it in perspective, you can say, this is our president, his soul is too much. We are just hungry. We are just, we are just praying. But if you put it in perspective, you will know that there are millions of people outside there that are depending on this fasting and prayer. It looks small to us, but if we hand it over to God, it has the capacity to bless lives and bring multiple rewards to you. But the same can be wasted. The, the person that gave a cup of water to the man of God can as well take that water and pour it away. Abi, the same water. Abi could be some water. But because he decided to give it to a man of God, because he is a man of God. At that, God this year, God will put in your hand just ordinary cup of water. But where you invest it matters. How you invest it matters. So don't commonize it. This is where I'm going. 
The assignment you will be given this year, you are going to be the chairman of this committee. You go and raise 100,000 for this. And you say, ah, don't commonize it. You are not working for Allah Sukkot and Solomon. And I'm not working for that team. I hope you know. I'm working for God. So I beg you in the name of God, have that understanding. And I'm not saying this only for this ministry. Anywhere you are, even as, as a doctor, as a tailor, as a teacher, there is no small work. Do it as unto the Lord. As God will give you contracts in, in your business as an electrician, don't do it just because of the money. Do it so that when they see you, they pay you your money and they see God in you. Because there is no small job. Ordinary dream. That was what Joseph interpreted. He was not interpreting needs for Pharaoh. He was interpreting it for God. And God said, this man, I'm putting you here. Or do you think it was Pharaoh that brought Joseph? To be, you think it's Pharaoh? Like that, if it was to be Pharaoh, all the support in the room would say, like, like, this man is ordinary man, though. he's a slave, oh. he's not a PDP member, he's not a PCO, in fact, he has not gone to school, he's just coming from prison, oh. but God said this is the man. Because even while in the prison, he was doing God's job. So God's job is not only when you come and minister, even when you meet people, people need to give them under people that you need to just help them carry their load, people that you need to push their car for them in the name of the Lord, cup of water. So this year, there's no small jobs. Even as you go out in a taxi, you have somebody that is stranded, pay for the money. Not the person. You are not paying the person. You are doing it in the perspective, the name of God. And like I said this year, we are going to do more of evangelism. And you don't have to wait until we have a meeting and we go out in the meeting. No. Even when you are alone in a taxi, God can minister to you, give this person a tract. Just say, Jesus loves you. As small as that is, it's a cup of water. When God adds to it, it becomes a big blessing. God will help us tonight. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word, which has severally divided itself into several areas that we, can, we didn't even intend. We ask, oh God, that to allow your word to find a way, a place to set to in our lives. That this year, we will remember this word and it will help us to serve you in the right perspective and to do the things of God with the understanding that we are serving the Lord. Even in our private, secular jobs, in the name of Jesus. Help us, O God, to discern your voice as we go on this year. We return all the glory to you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. See?